There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty great. So we're recording? Yep. <laughs> so you can start the thing. All right, here we go. Behind the screen, there's a world of pure imagination. Behind the screen, there's a world built for you and me. Oh, what a week it has been, dudes. Yeah, it has been a week. Now, now have you guys been inside most of the week or not? Uh, most yeah. of the week, most of the month, most of the quarter. <laughs> well, I know LA's opened back up. And yet, there's still plenty of reasons to stay inside. Phoenix has opened up, and I still am not leaving my fucking house. Um, there's never been a good reason to go outside in Phoenix. <laughs> hey, uh, why don't you put us on put us on uh, thumbnail or gallery view, Paul? Oh, hold on, let me just stop sharing. There we go. There you All go. Right. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, so shit has been crazy, obviously, uh, this past week. And uh, if you're uh, if you're smart, you know that uh, you know what shit is good and what shit is bad and if you're don't if, if you're smart and you don't know which is which hopefully you know where to look for it but we're not the people for that but we are uh sympathetic to your plight uh because our shit is just as crazy as your shit but here's a great example of shit being crazy you guys know that i love to uh meet folks on facebook right you like you know, is that what, what you like to do on yeah. facebook paul I likes like paul likes to make new friends exactly paul likes like to meet new people from different backgrounds and different uh, different points of view. I'm Share always... ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, for a while, uh, I was I was uh, trolling like three or four dudes all at one time. They were all friends who ganged up on me. And at one you point, were, right, you were trolling for dudes. <laughs> and at one point, I mean, they were just hillbillies, and I was just you know insulting them and fucking around but at one point i removed myself from the conversation and they kept going which was pretty funny <laughs> like for a good hour they kept talking to each other and insulting me until eventually um like uh there a lot of them were related and so like a, a sister-in-law or someone came in and and inserted themselves in the conversation and she was a little I'll give her credit because she was a l clearly a little smarter than all of them and a little classier and a little more attractive she was obviously not blood relative she had married into this family you know what i mean but she was still uh, on their side trying to defend them and you know and she was like joking about it and we kind of had a back and forth and i'm like oh this might be actually fun that i that i might actually meet someone on the other side who i respect right um it did not go that way because it didn't take long for her to say no you're wrong about trump being a racist and none of this is his fault so there was really nowhere we could go from there right yeah. So, so I was like, okay, well, fuck you and all your relatives. You're all hillbillies. I hope you get the fucking COVID, blah, 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 whatever I said. And then she said, okay, game on. And that was intriguing to me because then she blocked me. But of course, if you know me, you know that I have uh, many Facebook accounts, some used just for looking at Facebook accounts that have blocked me. So I went and did that. And I saw that she had posted uh, this big, long thing about me and it's on my i posted it to my facebook i i screenshotted it and i posted it and i put a link so and a bunch of people came to my defense so it was very nice um but it was this first of all she used the picture of uh i had posted where i took the cast of family matters and i put my face over carl's face so because it was part of a trivia game i was doing it was like you know what show is this from um but she used that as an example of me being a racist <laughs> <laughs> to, to like wow look at how what a racist this guy is he wants to replace black people i guess um but she didn't connect the dots she's just like wow look at this but then here's the key she said in the post he said that he loves to stir up shit and cause divisiveness between liberals and he gets paid by george soros and he said there are more of us and you can't stop us so she's saying that I that I I said all this shit oh. that, that they of course um, say is true, basically well, proving the narrative that it's all bullshit. And this is the point I want to make. There are people. Four years ago, I said this. 
And there were people who said, you need to calm your shit because that's not true. So this is all conspiracy bullshit. But it's true because there are motherfuckers who are getting paid for it in Russia and getting paid for it here. And then there are even stupider motherfuckers who are doing it for free. And this is proof of it. And it's on my Facebook page if you care. But the great thing is, like I said, all, I had a bunch of friends who fucking piled on her and she couldn't block them fast enough. Eventually the post got taken down, uh, but she still posts shit about me. So I'm the winner, of course. Well, well, I don't know about that part, but <laughs> yeah. Do you, now, do you, is the, the money you get from Soros taxable? How's that? Work? <laughs> the thing is, I barely break even on that. Yeah. I have so many fucking lawsuits I have to take care of. The Soros money barely covers that. That's what I would think is that's what I think the problem is. People don't understand, first of all, how hard you work for that money. And I'm, I'll, you. Give you, I'll give you credit because you are a really active bigot. And uh, the other thing is you've invested in it, right? <laughs> well, that's the other thing. I do put it back into the, into the business. For yes, sure. you give back. <laughs> is what you do you give back to a community not the community but a community oh, not to the community no, no your way. whole thing i remember years ago you go i love everybody but those motherfuckers never put me on family matters so forget it exactly now one black person put me on family matters that's so right for, forget it uh did you what you guys have any uh brushes with the law or antifa or uh, uh any real organizations uh, uh, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying, did it, did anything happen to you guys this week that, that, you know, might have, might be a, a good story that is indicative of the times we live in? Well, well, Jim seems to have gotten cast in a Green Lantern movie. That's exciting. Yes. I, I thought that was the uh, Borealis, one of the Borealis. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Sorry, my mistake. I, uh, <laughs> I, I got to meet some firemen this week, which was nice. Oh, yes. Uh, that is something we've all heard of. So uh, how much of that story do you want to tell? Uh, some. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, so let me tell my part of the story. How about that? I'll start with my part of the story. Yes, of course. I get, I get a text out of nowhere from our friend Vance Sanders, who I haven't talked to long since long before I moved out of L.A., and he says, hey, Jim passed out. He's on his way to the hospital. Uh, he's with this girl uh, who I won't say her name. I don't know why, but uh, she's with this you're girl. you're being decent. Good. I guess. So he's with this girl. Uh, here's her number. We're trying to get a hold of Mary Jo. They, they don't know her number. So that's where it all started for me. But I, I will say uh, I, I assumed that girl was somebody you're dating. So uh, I have to apologize to her for that because that was – clearly not the case after I spoke to her. <laughs> um, so then what, why did I get this text, Jim? So um, I was, I was out with a, a lovely lady and we were having uh, pizza and uh, you know how pizza is full of nuts. Oh, you got the nut pizza, huh? Yeah. Well, so the nut lovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, got that pizza hut nut lovers pizza. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So it was a, it was a vegan pizza because the person I was with is a oh. vegan. And uh, I made a point of saying, Hey, this doesn't have nuts in it. Right. Cause I'm allergic to nuts. And they said, Oh no, it doesn't have nuts. Why would it? Hey, 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 why would it? They said, no, they didn't say that, but they did say it didn't have nuts. And usually those uh, folks with allergies can probably back me up on this. When you have something that has a little bit of something you're allergic to, you react fairly quickly so you can stop eating the thing. But this had a lot of different stuff in it and my tongue didn't pick up on it because uh, the vegan cheese was soy, it had broccoli on it. It was actually quite tasty. Um, but it was so, a cacophony of flavors and senses, so. Yeah, it really did. So, because normally what'll happen when I have a reaction to something is I'll go, oh, this doesn't seem right and I can stop eating it. Well, about four pieces in, uh, we're almost done with the pizza. It was been a lovely night so far. Um, I uh, my throat starts to close up, and I do what I always do when there's something bad is happening, which is I start joking around too much, and I start to minimize it because that's two things that happen in uh, 
a crisis that I do that are not necessarily very healthy. They're psychological things. Like I go, oh, I'm going to be fine. So I took four Benadryl and I'm like, I'm going to be fine. Meanwhile, I'm actually saying, I'm behind and I can't talk really. And she don't know. So as far as she knows, I'm going to be fine because I'm telling her that <laughs> until she catches me on the way to the floor because I pass out. I lose consciousness. And she calls 911. Very good. And I'm sweating a lot. And the paramedics arrive and they give me an EpiPen and they give me other stuff. And they said, um, have you done any drugs or whatever they say? And I, because I'm in joking mood now, because I'm being, my defense mechanisms are all up. I go, only cocaine. And then they go, okay, when did you do cocaine last? And I realize, and in that moment I realized, oh, yeah, this ain't the time to be hilarious. Although I do think it's kind of funny, but I'm like, no, nah, I didn't, I'm just, I'm just kidding, I say. And she has to explain, ah, uh, he's a comedian and, it's just kind of what he does. And uh, as if that's an excuse. As if that's the perfectly good excuse to do that while you're dying. Well, yeah. Yeah. They're I know. like, oh, okay, I get it. We'll let him just we'll let him get it out of his system before yeah. he save his life. Like, yeah, I didn't know he was a comic. Yeah, well, he's just riffing. So first let me give you the shot. And hey, can we join in? We're like we like improv too. They probably um, were like, they're like, okay, hold on a sec. And they started giving you the light. Yeah. Right. So uh, and then the one guy wants to heckle you because he thinks that helps. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of hey. does because it makes me mad, which pumps my adrenaline. One, one paramedic <laughs> has, has an advice for something you can use next time you're dying. Yep. And then I'm like, you know what? Stop the treatment. <laughs> uh, so they give me the epinephrine. And then in the uh, ambulance, they give me another shot of epinephrine, which they're not really supposed to do unless but obviously it's really bad. And then I get to the hospital and they give me more epinephrine. So that's a third epinephrine, that's three epis, which that's is way too good. much. So uh, I realize, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna try to just answer the questions as uh, accurately as I can now. Uh, and then at one point they say they wanna intubate me. I asked them not to, and they said, well, we might have to. I go, I prefer you didn't uh, because I understand the, so if you know anything about being intubated when they put the thing down your throat is that then there's a recovery from that. Yeah. So obviously if they had to do it, they had to do it, but I didn't want them to do it unless it was absolutely necessary. And then the nurse, uh, she might've been a doctor, I don't know, uh, said, um, I don't remember, but I know there were nurses and doctors all telling me the same thing, which is that um, they had to do it quickly enough because at some point there might not be an opening wide enough to get a thing in. I'm like, okay, well do it before then. And uh, <laughs> uh, they had shot me up with a bunch of nonsense. And then finally I was a little bit better. Uh, and they were like, okay, we don't think we're gonna need to intubate, but it still might happen. Who, uh, who can make the decision? And I said, uh, tried to say my wife's name and I'm like, well, I hope they got it. I hope they don't just call the girl because uh, that's fine. I don't really care who makes the decision, but I don't want that to be part of the story. Uh, but luckily, they didn't have to intubate. And then, so here's a cool part. They had to give me a shot of potassium through uh, intravenous because I couldn't eat a banana because I couldn't eat anything. And the nurse said, just be aware, it'll feel like you're on fire. And she was not fucking lying. It feels wow. like you're on fire under your skin with the potassium, but what she did is she put it in the same line as the, um, as the water, as the, what's the saline drip. So, right. so because I was obviously getting fluid, she said, so that'll dilute it, it'll be easier. I said, great. I fell asleep, ran out of saline. She came back in the room while I was sleeping and I still needed some potassium. And she thought, well, he's sleeping, so I can just put in the potassium. <laughs> so wow. I was fast asleep. And then I went, ah, 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 I'm on fire. I'm on, and I couldn't find the button to call the nurse. So I just started screaming at the door and looking for my shoe to throw at it. She finally came in and goes, oh, that's my fault. That's my fault. I thought since you were asleep. And I was like, I, I ain't mad at you. You're just doing your job, but I'm on fire. And I was very polite at that point because I was like, I think I'm a pain in the ass. So I was super polite after that. And then uh, I couldn't eat for 16 hours. And when I finally could eat, I got potatoes. 
And they also gave me carrot cake. And then I, w I was like, doesn't carrot cake usually have nuts? So I got a nurse back and I said, you gave me carrot cake. And they went, it doesn't have nuts in it usually. And she went, ha, ah, took it away. It didn't have nuts. It turned out to be a carrot muffin, which doesn't have nuts or flavor. So it was fine. I was able to eat that and some potatoes. Um, the best part too, I think, is that I was possibly dying and uh, my wife couldn't come see me because uh, there's a COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, so that was pretty great. Uh, although I did get a COVID-19 test, I do not have the COVID-19, but they did confirm I'm stupid. <laughs> so, Are you gonna go back to check for COVID-20? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so tom what happened to you this week <laughs> nothing tom's the winner well done tom griffin oh boy what a and then of course uh, the world's on fire all those things yeah so uh so that worked out i guess that was uh they were just making you uh check your privilege that way the world's on fire so should this white man he should also be on fire. Right? Well, I will tell you that I felt, I really did feel bad about resources because I, now I know I didn't do it on purpose and all of that right. stuff. And no, I asked right. about the nuts and stuff, but I did feel shitty. And I think that that's one of the reasons why my joking around thing kicked in so hard because honest to God, I don't know if either of you guys have ever had this experience, but I have had this in my life multiple times where I can hear funny things coming out of my mouth and there's a different part of my brain going why are you saying that right now and i realized that it absolutely is defense mechanism but part of it was you know these fellas uh in the ambulance doing their job these lovely nurses these lovely doctors and in the next room by the way uh where i got received there was a woman screaming every 20 minutes because she was detoxing and all I could think was, I wish I wasn't here, not because I didn't want to hear it. I have every empathy in the world and I don't mind being exposed to stuff, but I was like, fuck, I'm taking away these goddamn resources. And that, I did feel bad about that. But you got her number, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I got it. you make your moves, you know? Well, to your point, they said uh, <clears throat> hospitals here in Arizona are at 100% capacity. So it's, it's actually, if you look at the stats, it's worse Arizona than it is any other state. Well, so don't, yeah. don't, don't get sick for real in Arizona. Don't get cancer or in any, uh, a car accident or anything because there's too many people who wouldn't wear a fucking mask filling the hospitals. Yeah, Sorry, guys. Same things happen in, in Florida. The same things happen in Texas. It's yeah, but in Florida, who cares? Right? No. All right. Let's talk about some stuff. Uh, did you guys watch the trailer for that movie, Tenet, that I asked you to? Yes. yes. Okay, so I don't know if you guys heard this, but a, a few weeks ago, I saw a story that said, basically, Hollywood, uh, all the studios decided they're going to put out one big blockbuster this summer, and if people go see it, then it's on, and they're going to open up for the rest of the summer. If people don't, then that's it until Christmas. They're going to shut it down and start over again at Christmas. Very sensible. Which, which, yeah, makes perfect sense, when you, especially when I say it out loud. It makes perfect sense to, to do that thing. And so you might ask yourself, well, what possible movie could get people to go out? And it's this movie, Tenet, that is directed by Christopher Nolan. If you watch the trailer, you see it is a huge blockbuster, like on an epic scale, probably bigger than any Chris Nolan movie I can remember. You know what I mean? Like if, what was that mind movie he made where everybody went in their dreams? You know what I'm oh, talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I do, but I'm enjoying this. Yeah. So anyways, if that was real, <laughs> that's what this movie looks like to me, Tenet. Uh, also, it stars Denzel's kid. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Washington Memento? the Third, whatever. <laughs> yep. uh, from uh, Black Klansman. Uh, so he's really good. And it's also obvious that this is meant to be a franchise. If, you know, if this movie does well, clearly, because he's like some kind of superhero spy guy. So this is clearly going to be a new black uh, superhero spy man that makes money and is not based on a comic book. So they get to keep all the money. And it looks like it's a big deal. 
And of course, if you know anything about Hollywood, you know that Christopher Nolan no longer makes small movies, sure. right? Every fucking movie he has made for the past, what, 10, 15 years has been a huge blockbuster. Oh, yeah. So, so this is the movie that they're betting on. And again, you have to watch the trailer to get it, but I think it makes sense. Do you guys agree with me that if this movie doesn't get people to the theaters, there probably will be nothing other than maybe like putting out, I don't know, some secret Avengers movie that nobody heard of. In which case, if people don't go, you just fucking wasted it. That's the other thing. If people don't go see this movie, they didn't blow a huge resource. They right. can try again in Christmas. Right. So I, if they, I feel if they like don't... Secret Avengers is probably not the next move for Marvel. That was not a very popular <laughs> you, series. You beat me to it. <laughs> ah, see, was, was that a thing? You're not talking about Secret Wars. Because I did see an article today that said Secret Wars might be the next movies. Did you guys see that? I didn't uh, see that, no. But no. That's, I've, I've heard speculation about that. But that's so dumb because there's been so much stuff taken from Secret Wars that are used already. It would just be like a skeleton story. Like, were they going to put in where Spider-Man gets the black costume? He got that like 12 times already, right? Yeah, yeah. They'll, it'd be a different version of that story. But the story itself of a Beyonder would be fine. Um, I, I hope they don't do it because I think that that's in retrospect – the whole Beyonder thing was overrated. Secret Wars is overrated, I think. But, but, then I we, but then we get to see Claw again. Andy Serkis come back as Claw. That'd be fun. Yeah, I guess that would be fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so you guys saw the trailer. So do you agree that this is a movie that could possibly get people out to the theaters? Well, here's what I think. I think if they want to go to the theater and this is their only choice, this is a perfect movie to find out if people are willing to do it. So I don't really think it matters so much which blockbuster it is. It obviously should be a movie that would attract people, but you're, a, you're asking two questions. Do you want to see this movie? And are you willing to see this movie? And they're very different <laughs> questions. Right, so right. I don't think it really is about the movie as much as it is about the temperature of the room. So you'll find out that like, honestly, you'll find out that you know, in Phoenix, hospitals are full and so are theaters because people are dumb. And then you'll find out that in some parts of the country, people are a little more tepid because they believe in science and they're not entirely sure this is the right way to go. So that's what I think it's going to play out. Also, I, I, have, I have seen that some theaters are already uh, retrofitting, taking out seats and getting ready to say, you know, you can sit six feet away from somebody if you want to come to our theaters yeah but Wait, you know what like, anybody who knows anything about what's gone on knows that the recirculated air means that if you're six yeah. foot apart you're not far you're enough right. apart so but also but also you gotta take into consideration even if the theaters are full now they're really only a third full so even if people do go to the theaters will it still be enough revenue yeah so, if they're if they're wearing it i guess if you're apart you're wearing your mask maybe it's okay but um, from what I understand about the current science, the worst places to be are in places with recirculated air. Yeah, I, and, and yeah, and where people are using their mouths, restaurants and movie theaters being the two. Yeah, movie they, theaters. Or, so or beauty salons, right, guys? <laughs> um, restaurants are more manageable because they're coming up with things where they do stuff on the street. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> or, I couldn't. That's something I couldn't get away with on the old show. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess because of the censors back then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the other point it brings me to is, and I brought this up earlier about how you know Hollywood is changing because you know Disney World is going to try to open up on Fourth of July. They said, and I think that's going to be. I think they're not going to do that. Quite frankly, I think Fourth of July is going to roll around and just say, "Never mind. There's too many fucking people sick, and we're not going to be a part of that." Because obviously it hasn't gone away and it's not, it's not fucking flattening the curve anytime soon. So Hollywood is the barometer. If, if Disneyland and Hollywood doesn't open up, I don't give a fuck what else goes on. The, America's not open. And so again, people still are going to want shit to watch like we talked about before with this uh, family movie night. You know what the latest version of shit to watch is? America's haircut night. Have you guys seen that? A celebrity giving another celebrity a fucking haircut. And this is on TV while there are riots going on. 
My point being, if you want to be on TV, now's the fucking time to do it. Get yourself one of these things like we're doing now, only make it good and fucking call somebody and get your ass on TV. Amy Schumer did it. I just watched eight fucking episodes of her cooking show and it was actually great. So this is what it's going to be. The only thing we're going to see on TV is shit that was already made, stuff they were going to put in the theaters but decided not to, and bullshit like this. And stuff from the future that they got. What? Like what? Right, like future shows. Like what? I, I, like, I, like, I like new shows. Yeah, like everybody loves Bob. Who's that? That's a future show starring this guy, Bob. Do we know him or is he not famous yet? It's not good. It's pretty derivative. Do I get a uh, show? No, no. Actually, you, there's, a, there's a new show called Everybody But Paul Gets a Show. And it is not nice to you. That lady who doxed you made it. It's not oh. good. Is I mean, a it's a good show. Is uh, it a reality show? No, it's, it's more, it's scripted. It's definitely scripted, but it's based on real stuff. Like, like it's based on your interactions with Soros, right? It's based and you on guys that. are on it. You guys are both on it? Yeah, yeah. It's based on that stuff you did to kids at a pizza parlor. Yeah, all that stuff. Do you guys play yourselves or, or, or characters? Um, Tom plays me and I play Tom. Are you saying, Paul, that we're not characters? <laughs> that is some bold casting. So do you wear a fake beard on the show? And then Tom, you wear a fake, uh, I don't know, forehead? A fake me melon? Yeah. Oh, dummy, we're on the free meeting. That's all right. It's going to end in like th two minutes. Now then we'll just start again and I'll tape it together. It's fine. Who cares? Well, I'm at the end of this, of this topic. Do we want to, do we want, because this is going to end in 15 seconds. Do we want to stop and then start again? Yeah, let's do that. Start a new topic? Yeah. All right. That's what happens when you make me the host. I don't have a professional Zoom account. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's right. why uh, that happens. Uh, no worries. I'll uh, invite you idiots back in a second. Okay. <laughs> Recording. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, let's talk about uh, some TV shows. Do uh, we want to handle, handle our old business before we get into the new? Yeah, we were talking about Space Force last week, and, uh, and I, I went ahead and watched all the rest of the episodes, and uh, to Tom's point, it was it's much better as a whole, uh, and uh, I enjoy. I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked, but I did enjoy it more than I thought. But one of the reasons I enjoyed it so much more was because of Jimmy O. Yang, who is hysterical on the show. Yeah. Uh, case in point, when he's driving with what's her name, and they're listening to K-pop, all that stuff. Very very funny, and it's such a different character than he played on Silicon Valley. Uh, I just think it's a really, not only is it really funny, but I think it's like for a guy who uh, looks like he does and talks like he does, he's showing a lot of range. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's really good and really funny. Yeah, and there's, a, there's a really funny bit of business he's doing in one scene where he's in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. and he's got a plate of French fries and he's like stacking the French fries in a very particular way. Right. He's got little dollops of ketchup in like a ring around the edge. And at first it seems like he's just sort of playing with his food. And then you realize at the end of the scene, like he takes one of the fries off the thing he's just constructed and, and dips it in one of the little dots. And you realize, no, he's just a complete weirdo who has this overly elaborate ritual yeah. before he eats his French fries. Yeah, he's uh, like many super smart people, I would assume he has these compulsive habits that help him uh, get through the, his day. You're like that, right, Jim? Uh, I, I am pretty compulsive for sure. Um, but like it's just little stupid shit you like to do throughout the day that doesn't bother anybody and it just helps, that makes you feel better, right? Yeah, but before I say something about my, me that will, you know, I don't want to say, um, how about I point this out? This I found interesting. I just saw an article about Space Force that because the Space Force in the real world isn't much of a Space Force and they haven't done much with it, it turns out that Netflix will win any copyright issues. <laughs> yeah, which is, it's funny because, so you know, glorious. you don't think about, you know, the fact that United States Marine Corps is copywritten, but it is just for, pur just for purposeful reasons, not to stop anyone from using it because who would do such a thing, right? Well, it is actually <laughs> to stop them from using it because in like, say, Say a Marvel movie, if they want to represent that the Marines are doing something, 
they right. do have to get the government's permission. And sometimes the government don't give it if they don't like the story. Yeah. Um, but again, that's, it, that doesn't often happen. Usually you're going to portray the Marines as the heroes. Sure. Uh, whereas the Space Force is a joke from the jump. The real Space Force is a bigger joke than the Netflix Space Force is. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the most cohesive version of Space Force is the television show produced by Netflix and Greg Daniels. Yeah. That's the only thing that Space Force is. So that's the thing. They're, they're basically copywriting the name of their TV show, not yeah. the name of their pretend thing in their show, but the TV show, which is genius because, of course, I'm sure that was part of the plan all along. If this takes off, then we have a legit claim to the term Space Force, yeah. right? And it did. I mean, it took off, ha, no pun intended. Um, but uh, yeah, that will be a funny thing because you, uh, uh, people don't know this, but you can copyright everyday terms like Space Force. Even You don't have to spell it weird just to copyright it. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Keep us updated, Jim. Oh, sure, 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 yeah. All right. Um, let's talk about uh, Rick and Morty. The finale of Rick and Morty is uh, what we want to focus on. Um, and, as a segue, sort of more of an interruption. I'm, just ra I'm derailing the show. I'm sorry. Um, but as long as we're handling old business, let's mention that we did finish, or I finished, and then Paul mostly finished, Solar Opposites. Um, I think our initial impressions about that show are pretty much right, but there is one really good episode in, this, in the, in the um, first season. They revisit the, the people in the wall, and they actually do some interesting stuff with that. And that is a very Rick and Morty-esque episode for sure, uh, because it's not as funny as you would like it to be, um, the way some Rick and Morty episodes are. Case in point, this finale uh, started off hilarious, really funny idea that this the real Beth is off uh, fighting aliens and doing amazing things. And this clone Beth was here. And then it all went to hell in what you think is a funny way, but in true Rick and Morty fashion, when the ending rolls around, it is not funny at all. And it was sad and disturbing was my, my feeling. Yeah. How about you guys. Uh, yeah. Sad and disturbing. And I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I, this is what I like about the show amongst many things that I've enjoyed about the show. You know, Tom is the one who introduced me to the show in a particular episode. Uh, he, uh, Rick Potion number nine and whatever, I think that's the name of the episode you keyed me into to check that out for sure. Um, if that's the name of the episode. It was definitely fucking sad. And what I, I liked, I just liked that they made very clear that Rick is not to be admired because, you know, I don't know if that really is them saying hey dudes cool it this is a good show but rick's not your hero i don't know if they're really doing that or not but that would be were, a very dan Harmon thing to do i feel like they were and i feel like they were doing it in a way that wasn't heavy-handed because it was still a great story and rick has always been that and man i just you know phoenix person love to see phoenix person again absolutely <laughs> love seeing him uh, the whole thing was great and the sorrow of it felt so palpable and real that I was fucking down. I was like, all right, this is a lovely payoff. And it wasn't the fan service payoff everybody hoped for. It wasn't evil Morty. It wasn't any of that. It was the payoff is you need to understand how broken this man is. <laughs> and that's a good story to tell. I loved it. Yeah, it was really good. What'd you think, Tom? Yeah, um, I liked it a lot. Um, I, I think I think Jim and I, I think we talked about this once before because I, I, I was saying to him that um, one of the things about this season I was a little dissatisfied with. I thought all the episodes were good and funny and all, but um, the, you know, in the previous seasons, there had been some, there'd been some character arcs. There'd been some storytelling. They'd, they'd been uh, willing to, um, upset the family dynamics every now and then and um, tr try some different stuff out. And then at the end of season three, they kind of did a hard reset on all of that. And right. they haven't really revisited most of that in season four. So like I was, they, they leaned into it hard suddenly <laughs> right at the end. And I was happy to see them get back to playing some of those notes. 
Yeah, and that's the key. They they leaned into it really, really hard, obviously on purpose. And it was, it was, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was really disturbing. Uh, I tried to watch it again, um, but I couldn't find it on the sling. It was no longer available. Hmm. Um, so I couldn't, I couldn't see it anymore, but it, it was a good episode. Uh, there will be another season, right? Uh, did I hear oh, yes. that? That was confirmed. <laughs> multiple, multiple more seasons. Yeah. Like, yeah. When they, when they got renewed last time, they got renewed for like a hundred episodes. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh yeah. Guess, yeah. Just as That's many. That's part of why it took so long to get a renewal last time was that they were negotiating this giant deal just so they don't have to renegotiate any 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 more for a while i guess and then it gives them freedom because they have that many episodes they just can make a show that's what the south park guys do and that's probably the, the model now when you're a successful uh animation show that's probably the model it's like okay we're making money now let us just make 100 shows and we'll mail them to you because yeah not, it, and, it, well i guess it's, been I mean, it's never been priority. adult swims model so that was uh, no, highly true. unusual. But yeah, but I'm, I'm saying I like the South Park guys clearly changed the fucking animation industry. And I think that's one of the ways they did it. Like Venture Brothers guys have that same kind of deal. It's a, it's a hit. So, well, you know, they get renewed like a season at a time and it takes two years to make it. And Really? Oh yeah. No. Yeah. They don't have, they do, they do not have the Rick and Morty deal. Oh no, no. 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 They're, and they're, they're, they're a great show. They're not necessarily an absolute hit they definitely have you know rabid fans it's just not nearly as many yeah i guess so and a lot of uh, more kids like rick and morty than like uh venture brothers well venture brothers is a deeper dive to understand what they're doing it just hey, is did you guys see paul giamatti on seth meyers uh after the premiere had aired um, you know, Seth Meyers is talking to people in their houses, but Paul Giamatti was on and they talked about uh, the premiere and he played whatever the conductor guy in that train, that train episode. And uh, he said, and he said, the best thing about it though, was my kid loved it. And Seth's like, why is that? So he goes, you don't understand. My kid is like Steve McQueen. He's the coolest kid in the world. Nothing impresses him. Doesn't matter what I do. Doesn't matter what anyone does. He is never impressed. He's the coolest. And he walks in the other day and says, hey, uh, were you on Rick and Morty? And I went, yeah, yeah, what'd you think? And he's like, all right. And walked out. <laughs> and he was like, and that fed me for weeks. And I was just like, wow, man. Fucking hey, that's what it's do like. Do you think if, he, now, this might be a dumb comment, hopefully it's not, but do you think if he told his kid, you're like Steve McQueen, they'd be thinking of different Steve McQueens? <laughs> uh, I don't know that the director, Steve McQueen, is so much famous. Yeah, but kids don't know who the fuck Steve McQueen is, and Steve well, McQueen no. is very. He famous. was saying that to Seth. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you're, I think he would just go, "Who's that?" No, he'd go the director, right? Wouldn't he say that? I don't think the director is well known enough, especially to teenagers. I, I mean, don't know, his, but his kids as cool as Steve McQueen, so he'd know who Steve McQueen is. <laughs> All right, Jim, you're such a Steve McQueen fan. Name three of his movies. All right, there's uh, Driving Man. Okay. And then there's uh, Shooting McGun McGunstern, right? Okay. You've seen that, right? And Shooting McGunstern's too, obviously. And then, uh, then uh, Laura and Jake Love Story. Ah, shit, he wasn't in that. But his wife was, oddly enough. Oh, Ellie yeah, McGraw right. was in Love Story, that, and she all was right. married to Steve McQueen. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, that show will come back, and it will be great. Uh, it's funny, because whenever I see an episode like that, that, it, that makes me sad, it reminds me of, I don't remember Your what whole the life. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the episode uh where they went to that universe and it turned out the king was a fucking pedophile oh yes and the nobody knew king i was at, like because that episode is really again really funny up until that point and when and you know right when it turns is when because morty gets away and you're like okay that was gonna go bad but it didn't and Morty got away, so that's good. But then when the king walks out and Rick gives him that look, you're like, okay, this is going to be a bad thing now, and I'm going to feel like shit when it's over. It's and then so, so you don't feel like shit enough, they have that postscript between the two guys who find the fucking pictures, right? Just yeah. to make it twice as bad. Yeah. It's awful. More it's more important they think of him as the jelly bean they thought he was. <laughs> rather than the God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, we want to move on from Rick and Morty? Sure. 
Okay, let's move on to trivia. Last week, the trivia question was about Fred Willard, who uh, I was in a sketch with on the Jay Leno Tonight Show. So the question your- was, the question was what uh, uh, Colin Quinn, tough crowd regular, wrote that sketch and cast me in it. The answer is T. Sean Shannon. Oh. Uh, T. Sean Shannon was on a lot of it. He wasn't like uh, he wasn't uh, like a regular like Nick DiPaolo, but he was on a lot of episodes. And he's a very fan. He wrote for SNL. He wrote, uh, this is why him and Fred were friends. When he wrote for SNL, he did those Bear City sketches. You remember those? Yeah. Those films? Yeah. Bear, Bear City. And Fred, Fred uh, uh, narrated those. But that's one thing T-Shawn did. So nobody got that or even bothered to. So here's my question this week. Um, did you guys hear about Elongated Man? Um, Ralph, the guy who plays Ralph Dibney on The Flash. This just came out today, so you may not have heard about it. No, I didn't. Uh, he got fired because somebody unearthed a bunch of old shitty tweets of his. Uh, no. Some that were racist and some that were sexist. And so the CW said, you're done. He issued a statement saying, I feel bad and I'm sorry. And that's the, that's the end. So nice grab back, though. It's nice that it wasn't just <laughs> one or the other. Yeah, right. He did. I mean, he took all responsibility for it. First um, style, yeah. But, uh, but uh, I find it, I don't know, I, I, I'm glad that they did the right thing and just said, okay, we're not going to make excuses for this white man or show him any quarter. Uh, hit the fucking road. You'll be fine. And, and I, I think that's great. Unfortunately, and I think Tom is echoing this sentiment, Elongated Man was a great character. <laughs> he was I've, one of the best things about that show, sadly. I, I, yeah, I've, I've always liked the Elongated Man character in the comics. I thought... I agree really grew in i wasn't sure about what they were doing with him when they introduced him i thought they they grew into it i liked him they they just they just brought in sue who's a great character from the comics yeah they just gave him his own arc on the show nobody yeah. else he did it wasn't a team up thing it was just him and i honestly thought okay this is at least going to be some kind of show maybe he gets his own special or something on cw seed or something because as we've seen from uh the legend guardians of tomorrow legends of tomorrow the best thing they could have ever done on that show was fucking switch up the cast every two three seasons you know so that would be a great thing but uh that's what happens when you aren't here's the thing if i ever got famous it wouldn't last very long for this exact reason <laughs> unless i was famous for being an asshole which is very which is actually more likely than anything else but uh, but luckily my twitter account is is gone from the old days those things probably exist somewhere but they're not easily found but that doesn't mean there isn't a million fucking things that i've done and said that i shouldn't have that i'm embarrassed about sure so how do you not once you get to a level of fame how do you not fu- i'm sure there are firms and businesses that you can pay that will go over that will search the internet for hours and days and find all the shit they can and just get rid of it how are you such a fucking noob that you don't at least just shut your twitter down or go over it once or twice honestly i'm i'm surprised that people are still on social media like i'm surprised that people haven't because it's not just it's not just famous people they get in trouble for things they wrote yeah people People lose their jobs. Yeah. People become the center of dumb controversies because of something they tweeted when they were 16. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, and, and you, I don't and, know why anybody, why, why do people put up with the risk? Like, I don't know why anybody would do it. Why, why, why are people still on social media? How has it not imploded already? How is and people- to, to your credit, you were never on Facebook, right? I was never on Facebook. And, that's, and that is saying something, considering that Facebook has really come and gone as far as, society goes it's only old people like me and jim on facebook now kids don't like it and it, w- it wouldn't be a thing anyone new would join um that's quite a uh, an effort that's quite a, a feat i want to applaud you for that but you did join twitter when it became convenient i remember the day you did it and you weren't like super active but i remember you saying uh, you kind of enjoying it mainly mm-hmm. so you could take pictures of stuff and share little jokes and shit every once mm-hmm. in a while right right uh, do you still have a Twitter account? Tech, well, tech, I still have my account. I don't, I haven't tweeted in, I don't know, three years or something. Okay, so you basically abandoned it. Uh, I did. So, so let me ask you, a guy who barely did anything on social media, and the chances that you did anything super offensive are almost zero. 
If you got super famous for some reason, let's say you got on the news and you were the new green, you guys know green shirt guy, Alex Cack. You yeah. remember that? Yeah. Uh, he's, you know, he lives in Tucson. I know him, you know? And so when he got famous, it was like, Hey, I know the famous guy all of a sudden. So let's say that happened to you. Right. And you were all of a sudden a uh, young beard guy from the protests and everyone wanted to talk to you. Would you go back and just to be safe, just shut that shit all down and start fresh? Or do you feel safe enough that you wouldn't give a fuck? I, I think about deleting it, my account now sometimes. <laughs> okay. Sometimes right. I go, ah, maybe I should get rid of that. And I don't think there's any particular reason. I'm, I'm just a little paranoid. But so, yeah. Better think, safe than sorry, right? I got, yeah, I think if I got famous yeah. for some reason, yeah, I would. You would yeah, run I, home from that news, that live news report and delete your social media. I probably. What about you, Jim? You're much more active, especially on Twitter and the Facebook. But, well, uh, but again, the stuff you say is generally innocuous, fun stuff. So listen, um, on my Twitter account, the only things that I would be a little embarrassed by are I look at some of my early jokes on Twitter and they're not very good. But <laughs> they're, um, you know, all joking aside, I, I don't say racist stuff on Twitter. I just haven't. I'm sure that I've said something that could be misinterpreted. The maddest I ever made anybody when I was just joking was I made a joke about Bitcoin. And then the guy who came, came after me, I said, oh, I was just joking. And he went, oh, okay. That's oh, wait, what, what about the time when the guy from the Coast Guard thought you and the old school all-stars were full of shit and he took you guys down? Remember that? Oh, yeah. But see, I can stand behind that even today because it's objectively it's objectively satirical about nwa and i would not delete that even if it, i thought it would get me in trouble because the context is so objectively clear what we're satirizing and i wouldn't be worried about it in that regard and no of course i'm joking why would you people take that? people still make fun of the coast guard so no i obviously you, you wouldn't take that down but i think that would be funny like you got famous and someone said but what about this problematic song that you did recorded with your rap band, OSA? Let's hear a snippet. Yeah. <laughs> and they thought you were a real rapper in the, in the old days. How great would that fucking be? You know what would be great is if some reporter did that because they were calling me out and the very next day they fired that reporter because they went, well, this report is clearly racist because they think this is hip hop. So they're clearly out <laughs> of touch. Like, there was a black guy in all the pictures. How would I not take it seriously? It was right there. If it was all white guys, I'd assume they were joking, but it was two white guys and a black guy. Never heard of third base. All right. Um, so here's the trivia question. Uh, third base fan. <laughs> getting a right back around to it. Um, the character elongated man uh, is, is not very widely used. Uh, and we probably won't see him again now that this happened. But he, uh, before this, his biggest um, showing was probably on Justice League Unlimited, um, where uh, they ha they would use a bunch of different characters. And there was one whole episode I think he was he was featured in. So my question is, what other famous douchebag provided the voice for Elongated Man on Justice League Unlimited? And that's the hint that he's a famous douchebag. So we used to make an educated guess and guess a famous douchebag. See, this feels like a setup. It, it, no, it, he really is. Yeah, I see how, it, like, the answer's, I don't know, Zach Efron. But no, uh, he's a, I think we will all agree he's a douchebag, at least in some regards. Ah, I know this one. It's Ted Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Zach Efron played Ted Bundy, but no. That's oh, not okay. correct. Cause, that's, cause a, right. that's a bad guess. You know, he wasn't a voiceover artist. Uh, <clears throat> he wasn't great. <laughs> Tom, do you have yeah. a guess? Uh, it, was, uh, it was Al Bundy. <laughs> okay, that's even a worse guess because he's not real. Yeah, but he's, he's not great. Well, neither of them are. You're right. In terms yeah. of not greatness, they both qualify. But at least Ted Bundy was a real person. Uh, unlike Al Bundy, well, who, you know, I, I get it. He was doing I get it that Al Bundy was pretty superficial, and I get that everybody wants to cancel him because of that club he was in. But hey, that was <laughs> it was the '80s, Jim. 
Yeah. Uh, so if you know the answer, if you happen to be listening and you know the answer, <clears throat> send it to me somehow uh, through Messenger or whatever. And, uh, and while I'm thinking about it, if you want, uh, every other Wednesday night on my Twitch channel, I'm doing my game show, all your favorite game shows via Zoom with my friends. If you guys want to do it, we'll talk about it later. Uh, I but it. I did it last week with Mike Schmidt and some people. I'm doing it again next week with Asterios Kokinos and some people. So check out my Twitch channel, which is The King OTV. The King OTV. Gotcha. Uh, and if you want to, if you're listening and you want to play it, there's clips there of the show and you want to play it, let me know. Tell you what, whoever answers this trivia question right, they can play the next game. What a fucking prize that would be. Wow. Huh? Wow. Mm. wow, what a prize. All right. Uh, so you guys want to you guys want to talk about South Park before we uh, wrap this up? Well, I thought it might be a good topic. It was something Tom and I talked about that was I found kind of interesting. Um, so, Tom, is that interesting to you to talk about? <laughs> well, I mean – we don't have much choice now. We, we've introduced this. So. No, I actually think... It's going to be immensely unsatisfying if we don't... I think a better conversation would be, let's talk about whether or not this hypothetical conversation is a good conversation and leave it at that. So funny I mean, that. I wasn't going to bring it up, but then... Okay. Like, we've backed know, into it now. You think people would enjoy talking about this thing, though, right? Uh, oh, God. What is the point? Nah, okay. So, uh, Tom and I were talking, and uh, he mentioned that he he thinks he's probably done with South Park, that they've <clears throat> gone far afield enough in doing things that are potentially harmful that it's hard to support them. I have a similar feeling about, I really have a hard time watching Kill Bill. I won't do it anymore, knowing how abused Uma Thurman was in the filming of Kill Bill. So I found that interesting that when you take a piece of pop culture and you're affected by what, what artistic choices or whatever, Tom, you gave one example. Why don't you give that example of one of the lines they cross? So, I, so yeah, I, I, I struggled with this for a while. I've seen this episode before a couple of times and I think I pushed it out of my head because I, I liked South Park. I've never been a huge fan, but I liked it for a long time. There's, and sometimes I agree with them, but every now and then they, I think they, they push out a real half-assed uh, opinion and it hurts because you know that these are guys that th this isn't family guy where they'll just say anything to get a momentary <laughs> reaction. Like, and, and, they, and then they follow it up with, by the way, don't take us seriously because here's a fart. Right. You know but, what I mean? but like South Park sometimes means it. They sometimes yeah, yeah. mean what they say. And so there's the episode where they basically deny that alcoholism exists Oh, and it, I, that just seems not aware of that. they it seems really irresponsible to me and i i think by the, th the i just recently saw it again for like the third time and i was like i can't i don't think i don't think this is the only time that they've taken a half-assed irresponsible stance and i don't think i want to support a program that is reckless when they yeah. they're they they can be better than that which they've so, proven, but, yeah. And it's and easy for me to say that because I was not watching it regularly anyway. But now, <laughs> like, I would sometimes, like, Comedy Central will show it for, like, six hours at a time. And sometimes I would turn the TV on to Comedy Central and let it play in the background. And now I feel like I can't do that anymore because now I, I don't yeah. want to look at it. Yeah, and unlike, say, Family Guy, whatever you think of Family Guy, like, if you recognize it's bad, that's fine. But nobody looks at Family Guy and thinks, oh, this is an interesting moral lesson I should think about. They, they've never put that on themselves. So yeah. even if they do something ridiculous or even where you're like, oh, I don't know if I like that they did that, but you're not worried that they're influencing the culture as a whole, whereas South Park has made a point of, of, a, of taking that mantle on. They're actually making commentary. So it's not the same. Well, uh, and also, uh, I mean, look at the, Look at those two careers, you know, the South Park guys and Seth, uh, what, McFarlane. <laughs> uh, the South Park guys, not only did they do South Park, which is a good show and sometimes has great social commentary, they did uh, uh, Team America World Police, which was all social commentary. And then they did the Book of Mormon, which was some of the most important social commentary of the past, you know, the past decade. Whereas Seth McFarlane, did the Cleveland show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And made, yeah. and made records where he sang Frank Sinatra songs and then made that movie about the old West 
where he was in every fucking scene and none of it was funny. He knows he has no responsibility to be taken seriously, which is why half the things he does is a fucking jerk off. He's just seeing what he can get away with. Yeah. Tom, is he frozen for you too? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> so I think yeah. uh this is this is good. I think Paul makes a very good point. Uh and I, I believe he is still in the middle of making a very good point at this <laughs> very moment. Um and I and I for one support the point he's nearly about to complete. <laughs> this is I'm actually in suspense right now. Like yeah. is he gonna come back? Is he gonna know what happened? Is he going to be right. like mid sentence? <laughs> this is so great. Uh, and and I will say that I oh, think there he goes. Yeah. Well, everybody, um, Paul is furious about South Park, and he had to take a step away. He's <laughs> he's mad that Tom brought it up. He's mad that Tom brought it up in the first place. He's mad that I did my little bit at the beginning where I talked about whether or not we were going to talk about, and that's fair. I think he was right to be mad about that. Don't you, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. That what was, that was clearly a waste of everybody's time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, uh, Hey, how about when he comes back in where we finish the conversation where we're like, you go, I guess I do like South Park again. <laughs> do that when he comes back in. Right. Is he coming back in? Yeah. Has he recontacted you? Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Tom, what were you just saying? Well, no, so I think I, I, that was a really good point you made, Jim. I, so I, I guess I'm back on board. I'm, I'm okay with South Park. Yeah. Wait, so what was the point? What, I, what, what was it? It's so, so hard to get into. but the Well, point no, is, I, I mean, I'd like to watch South Park again, too. I was yeah, thinking yeah. about getting back into it. I just needed a good reason. You know, it's it, you had to be there, really, and not All frozen. Right. Oh, son of a... <laughs> oh, we got 10 so, minutes. But you, you, you see my point. Oh, we're back at the 10 minute version. All right. Oh, and your phone is ringing. Wow, it's, just, it's just like the original Paul Goebel show, isn't it? The only thing we need is for Brian to show up late and ruin it. Fantastic. Get Brian to show up and start banging pots together. I, and say he's back, baby. Oh, All right. My well, sister probably asking if I'm dead. Well, I, to, to your point, to your point, uh, Tom, I feel that same way about, uh, about, a, a lot of things uh the joker movie is the latest one um i'm not really on board with the theme of what i feel the joker movie is but then if that was if it was just that i'd see it to, to so i could make an informed opinion but the fact that there's a gary glitter song in it which means that this child molester is making money every time someone watches that movie he's not going to get any of my money so fuck mm. that movie you know what i mean yeah. and it has nothing it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie or the Oscar winning performance, just yeah. like your, your decision has nothing to do with all the other hilarious episodes. Yeah. I, I agree with you about the Joker. I stepped out of the Joker movie based on a lot. And I would rarely do this, but the fans being so gross before the movie even opened, like preemptively yeah. being disgusting. I'm like, look, at least with fight club, you waited until it was over to get, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You guys yeah. were like, oh, yeah, I don't care what this movie is about, but I don't like ladies. And I was like, all right, well, then, then no. Sometimes and then the director was being such a tool about it. Yeah. I'm like, make your movie. Don't be a tool. You're, you're not funny. Ugh. It's also, it, it just bugs me that it's supposed to be a superhero, anti-superhero villain movie, whatever. Fuck that. Yeah, that movie has nothing to do with comic books. Um, all right, are we, uh, we want to move on to wrap this up. We done here? Yeah, I got time, my yeah. Before the timer runs down, <laughs> I got a mashup for y'all. All right, do this mashup and then uh, let's send it home. All right, Jackson. Now listen, that we make sprockets. We make sprockets. That's what. Hold on a minute. Let me show you my penis. We make sprockets. Now you should play with my balls and do not tell anybody that you are playing with my balls. But hold on, let me do my Johnny Carson impression. Well, this is some weird wild stuff that you are touching my balls. I'm sure uh, Ed said, will I get canceled? I might get canceled. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> Are you? Is he orgasming? Is that what that is? Yes. From the ball touching? Yes, from the ball touching. <laughs> like how you can't do an impression of this guy, so you do him doing an impression of another guy. <laughs> Every time I've done any version of him, that's how I get there. <laughs> it's like in that SCDV sketch, uh, what was it, the Merv Griffith show. Right, yes. Dave Thomas couldn't do a Gomer Pyle impression, so he was Fred Travelina doing a Gomer Pyle impression. <laughs> yep. yep, absolutely. Well, I think we both know what it is. Tom, do you want to do the honors? Was it Kevin Spacely? <laughs> yep. Kevin Spacely of Kevin Spacely Sprockets. Yes. Kevin Spacely's Space Sprockets. Ugh. Oh, and his competitor, uh, Harvey Cogswell <laughs> <laughs> of Cogswell's Motion Pictures. All right. That's all right. Funny. That was funny. Oh, glad we ended it on a high note. Um, all right. So uh, if, we're, if we're back and alive, who knows, man? Anything could kill us these days, right? Yep. So if we're alive, we'll be back again. Um, anything you guys want to tell people to do, uh, promote or anything before we go? Not, no, but do tell people that you love them if you do, because you don't have a lot of time. So. Yes. And as always, Jim, thank you for uh, giving us food to eat and uh, wearing a mask while you do it. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. We're going to go fuck ourselves. I legit like the new ending.